Now, they are people who feel shut out of society. They are people uh, facing 34% unemployment and with no future. So they are people where drug trafficking is the only option that they see left to them. That uh, from the mayor of La Línea de Concepción, just north of Gibraltar on the southern tip of Spain. More than 70% of the cannabis in circulation right across Europe comes into the continent on the southern Spanish coast, mostly transported from Morocco, in fact, just 30 kilometres away on speedboats. Well, for Focus today, our correspondents Milena Hue and Sarah Morris have this report. It's becoming routine. Every morning, Spanish customs officers take to the sea looking for traffickers. In the Gibraltar Strait, a hundred customs officers patrol the coast seven days a week. They're after speedboats carrying drugs. They're 12 meters long and extremely powerful. Here in the Strait, it's a permanent race because the response time is minimal. The African coast is just nearby and their boats are so fast that we have to stay on permanent alert in order to catch them. Every year, the pressure on this gateway to Europe for cannabis grows. Last year, 113 tons were seized, three times more than in 2016. By sea, a round trip between Morocco and Spain takes less than an hour. They're like flies. They move around everywhere. They're unpredictable. The coast is really difficult to navigate, and there is a lot of traffic in the ports. That's why we put a camera system in, sea patrols, and also helicopters. This year, the customs officers have got their own fast speedboats to stop the drug pushers reaching the bay. Boats and helicopter chases are common because the traffickers even try to reach La Línea's beach in broad daylight. For the tourists, it's like a Hollywood action film. Sometimes, like here, the traffickers give up and drop the drugs. To stop the speedboats reaching the shore, the town haulers put up barriers and place cameras strategically. In the district at Tunada, the authorities believe fishermen may be helping the traffickers. Juan Morente is the only fisherman prepared to discuss the situation. Is there drug trafficking in the port? Of course, sometimes there is, but not here. With a beach that's 11 kilometers long, sometimes there is trafficking. I'm not going to lie to you, or at least there was in the past. An analysis that doesn't stand up to what we see on the ground. Four hours after this interview, we witnessed the questioning of about 10 people suspected of involvement in trafficking. Police vans, the neighborhood on lockdown. A common scene, says this resident. The speedboats drop the drugs off and loads of kids come running through the streets to pick up the packets. They then disappear off in the back streets. How did La Línea end up becoming the hashish hub of Spain? Jose Juan Franco is the town's mayor. He says the reason is purely economic. The problem here is that a lot of the people are close to being shut out of society. There's 34% unemployment. Drug trafficking is the only option they see left to them. The trafficking has brought with it a culture of criminality, easy access to various drugs and a problem of addiction to harder substances. Agosti is a minister at the rehabilitation centre. A former drug addict, he served time in prison for stealing. This is the room where young people who have been clean of drugs for five to six days live. That's the phase which is the hardest to get through. People go through a radical change. They come from a world which is totally desperate, where they are totally addicted to drugs. We've even had traffickers here. Because to pay for their drugs, helping traffickers is the fastest option. This centre helps get addicts clean and back into society, with space for 30 men for six months. 
The association isn't financed by the region, but by an evangelical church. The residents of the centre pray every day at the local church. They have seats reserved for them. Volunteer Boba helps the young people to cope. A former trafficker, he spent 20 years in jail. He was just 12 when he started helping drug traffickers. By the time he was caught, he was earning 250,000 euros for a single trafficking operation. I ended up becoming the boss. I had teams of people who picked up the merchandise, prepared it, and delivered it even. Everyone knows someone who in some way plays a part in that system. Everyone is involved. More than half. Yes, more. Boba may be a role model for those looking to give up drugs, but the town isn't quite ready to leave old demons behind. Trafficking remains La Ligna's most lucrative business.